There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and visible chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to the second question for the nuclear chemistry chapter. In this video, I'll cover to the question from a past HC exam, um, which is an A and a B question. So I'll go cover, I'll read both the A and the B part, and then I'll give you about five seconds to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, try to attempt the question, and when you're ready, just press play, and I'll go over the answer. So A is describe the conditions under which a nucleus is stable, unstable, sorry, that's worth two marks. And B is the following is a flow diagram showing the sequence of products released during the decay of uranium, which is this one here. Use examples from the flow diagram to describe processes by which an unstable isotope undergoes radioactive decay. And that's worth three marks. So pause the video now and then attempt the question. Right, so I'm back. So for the first one, describe the conditions under which a nucleus is unstable. You need to think about the different types of conditions. So for example, that we might have a large atom or you know the small atoms, for example, the ones which have atomic number of less than 20 or greater than 20, and explain what kind of conditions, so describe the conditions that make this an unstable nucleus. So I'll go over what I've written for the first part. So this is the large atoms are always unstable as their at atomic number is greater than 83. Now, this says describe, so you don't have to explain, you don't have to give much detail. All you have to do is describe that it's unstable and when it's unstable. You don't have to explain why that is the case. As for large atoms, they're always unstable if they have the atomic number greater than 83. Smaller atoms with the atomic number of equal to or less than 20 that's equal to or less than 20, are unstable if their proton to neutron ratio is higher or lower than 1.1, 1 to 1, 1. Again, we just describe it and explain. You don't have to explain why, just describing it. And then atoms with an atomic number greater than 20 but smaller than 84 are unstable if their proton to neutron ratio is higher or lower than one proton for every 1.5 neutrons. So this will give you, so we've described that if they're too large, they're always unstable. And we've given the whole 1 to 1 and 1 to 1 1.5 ratio. So this will give us a full two marks for 2 out of 2. So the second part was the following is a flow diagram showing the sequence of products released during the decay of uranium. Use examples from the flow diagram to describe processes by which an unstable isotope undergoes radioactive decay. So there's two parts to this. First of all, we have to describe these processes. So what are they? Let me give a definition. And then we have to relate those processes to what occurs with this uranium here. So then relate to example. Now, when it comes to this example, uh, hopefully you should be able to read that, but we've got mass number on one side, atomic number on the other side, and it starts with uranium, eventually goes down to PB, which is lead. So what I wrote is a radioisotope will undergo alpha and or beta decay to eventually become a stable isotope. So this is the, what are these processes? These processes are alpha and beta decay, which will eventually become a stable isotope if this is always happens. So it goes from uranium to lead for these two processes. And I also gave a quick definition of what alpha and beta decay is. Alpha decay involves the release of a helium nucleus and beta decay involves the decay of a neutron into a proton with the release of an electron. That was just a definition of alpha and beta decay. So now we've gotten, for this we definitely get a mark, maybe even two, but definitely one mark. And then we have to relate it to the example itself. So what I wrote um, is uranium will undergo both alpha and beta decay to eventually become a stable isotope of lead. So PB, lead, I know PB was lead, but if you don't know that it's lead, it's fine as well. You just can just give this symbol itself because the symbol is on the actual diagram. So it starts with uh, uranium and goes to lead. So that's how it goes from unstable to stable. So that's good. And then um, I mentioned that this occurs in a total of 16 steps and it can take a long time to happen. This can actually take millions of years for uranium to happen. But since when you get this kind of question, you might not know exactly how long it takes. 
just good to mention that in most cases, if it goes from one product, which is a radioactive, to a stable one, it will take a long time. So just mention that as well. And this should give us one mark as well. So now I've got two out of three. And now we give the actual examples. So the two I've given are that uh, we have uranium. So this, is the, this is two steps of this whole 16 steps. So this first step here that I've given is this one here, uranium going undergoing beta decay. So uranium-238, which is the atomic mass and the atomic number of 92, undergoes, actually not beta, but alpha decay. So it loses a helium particle and goes from 238 to 234. And because it lost two protons, its atomic number is now 90. And this is the symbol TH. So it goes from uranium to TH. And if you don't know the name of the actual atom, that's fine as well. Just give the symbols. This was the example of alpha decay. And then you should also give an example of beta decay. So the beta decay one that I gave is when TH undergoes beta um, decay and goes into PS. So that was this one here. And so we go from 234 uh, TH with atomic number of 90 to 234 PS with atomic number of 91. The reason why is because beta decay turns one of those neutrons into a proton and release an electron. This is beta decay. And if you give one of those equations, you should also get a mark. So here I have 3 out of 3. Um, when it comes to these tables, again, you don't need to know all this by heart. All you need to be able to do is work with these kind of tables and get all that information from the table itself. And if you want to know what actual syllabus dot point this was related to, so the question itself was distinguish between stable and radioactive isotopes and describe the conditions under which a nucleus is unstable. So both these five marks all come from this one syllabus dot point. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.